For those of you that missed AMD's live stream last night, one, you can check out the full live stream in the link in the description if you're interested, but two, let's do a quick recap. The main things that I want to cover in this video are the Radeon 7 launch, which is their new high-end graphics card to compete with the RTX 2080, mentioned not TI. They also have some new Epic servers using the Zen 2 core, and following on from that is also the new Ryzen 3rd generation, which again uses the Zen 2 core. Uh, all of these things, by the way, are actually all 7 nanometer, which is pretty interesting. So starting off with the one that they launched first, the Radeon 7, their new game and compute graphics card. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Now the main details we have is that it has 60 compute units which is actually four less than a Vega 64 but we assume more cores per unit. It's also a seven nanometer chip as I mentioned. It also has 16 gigabytes of HBM2, which is likely why its sale price is $699 at launch, which is launching on the 7th of February. They may, and this is speculation, they may do an 8 gig model, which would sell for a good bit less, as HBM2 memory is known to be pretty expensive at the moment, um, with obviously maybe a little bit less compute performance or something like that, but it's still pretty impressive. According to AMD, both in DirectX 11, 12, and Vol Vulcan, it has impressive and comparative performance to an RTX 2080. Note, as I mentioned, this is not the 2080 Ti killer that we all kind of hope AMD will produce, and while they may be able to push this a bit further, especially from the look on the card which has two 8-pin power connectors as opposed to the 2080 standard 6 plus 8, uh, that means that this is ever so slightly more power hungry and therefore uh, may actually be pushing the power envelope when it comes to, you know, standard graphics cards. Now we don't really know anything other than what I've already mentioned, so with the recap out of the way, this is the, the thoughts and the inference part. For me, this is an interesting card. I'm, I'm very happy to see AMD is competing at the higher end, and of course, this is essentially, uh, if Nvidia hadn't launched RTX, this would be a 1080 Ti uh, kind of killer type card, uh, and that's great. It's also launching at a pretty decent price point, although it's launching at basically the same price point as a 2080, so it really comes down to the, the feature set rather than the performance now, which is where I would like the world to be, but because of Nvidia's just massive market share, uh, for AMD to really claw any back, they're really going to need to A, give a great value for money when it comes to the card itself, and obviously B, the, the software side and the extra features um, that they provide. Uh, so definitely uh, an interesting one. Where I'm actually most excited is for the cards below this one, the, the 2017 and the 2060 killers. Uh, those ones should actually be pretty impressive, and especially with a, a lesser amount of uh, HBM2 memory, this could actually be a compelling value point with potentially better performance for potentially, uh, you know, kind of less money. Uh, especially, I mean, as you're watching this, the day that you're watching this will be the day that I get my 2060, so I'll be doing a full video on, I think, Monday, um, when I actually get the card and can benchmark it all. Um, but with that in mind, uh, that card is effectively giving, giving 1070 Ti performance for about 1070 to 1070 Ti money, so it's not, you know, kind of game-changing in the performance that you get from it. Um, so hopefully the AMD cards and the new Radeon 7 line can uh, kind of infill some better competition here. Now jumping on to the Epic server side of things, this is not my area of expertise, this is not the area that I normally work in, so I will defer uh, the opinions on this side to the experts uh, and just give you a bit of a highlight reel and then jump on to Ryzen 3. Now the new Epic server chips are going to be using the new Zen 2 core architecture. This is using the 7 nanometer process node, which is again very impressive to see being so close to mainstream uh, considering Intel's 10 nanometer woes and all that sort of stuff so um, that is definitely awesome to see. The other awesome thing to see is that because they redesigned the core architecture with an, a separated IO die this now means that they can have quite literally double the cores per chip that they had before meaning up to 64 cores per chip itself, and this can still be run in a dual chip or dual socket motherboard configuration, which actually, as long as the board has a BIOS update, your existing dual socket board should be able to support these new chips, which is just 
quite literally insane. To show just how insane, they ran a benchmark on stage comparing two Intel Xeon Platinum 8180s, which is the highest end Xeon uh, Intel does currently, uh, two of those against just one new Epic chip. Now, bear in mind that benchmarks on stage, especially at trade shows and, you know, company events will be uh, I guess it's slightly skewed towards the, the favor of the company who is hosting it. So while it's you know very impressive to see, take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt until you see any you know third party publications doing benchmarks. But uh, they quoted that their single Epic chip was 15% faster than two Intel Xeon Platinum 8180s, which again is just well as the name implies quite epic. Moving on to the Ryzen 3 side of things or third gen Ryzen. And this is uh, this is kind of more my wheelhouse and also very very interesting. So again, this is still using the new seven nanometer Zen two. Uh, architecture and process nodes and is going to be pretty interesting. So as I mentioned, they've redesigned how they do a chip on itself. So you have an IO die and a effectively uh, the, the actual core dies where you have all of your cores. Now, the most interesting thing for me is that uh, a lot of the pre CES leaks were suggesting that there will be 16 core chips available on the standard AM4 socket and you won't need a thread ripper to get that sort of high core count. This would be kind of insane, and apparently, at least from the, the, the die that they held up, it looks like there is definitely space for another core die, and that it may have actually been there, or at very least the tooling is already set up to do that. Uh, so that will be incredible to see. But the, the more incredible thing is, again, a benchmark they ran on stage. Um, this uh, looks to actually check out fairly well from, from the Cinebench runs that I've seen from other people with 9900Ks, including myself. The 9900K number that they quoted for Cinebench was 2040. Their new Ryzen 3 chip, which is still only an 8-core, 16 threads, but with an unreleased clock speed or unconfirmed clock speed, uh, they were running 2050. Now, this is not necessarily, you know, wholeheartedly uh, it beats it, but do bear in mind that uh, something like a Ryzen 2700X, which is still an 8-core, 16-thread chip, uh, normally clocks in at about 1800 rather than the 2000 to 2100 mark uh, in Cinebench. So this is a great step up, and if they're selling this new Ryzen 3 chip, which is 8 cores and 16 threads, at the same price that they're selling the 2700X currently, that would be very much a 9900K killer. The final thing to mention about that is that they were also showing the total system power draw where the 9900K was drawing around about 79 watts through the, through the run, whereas the new Ryzen 3 chip was only drawing 133. Now do bear in mind that again, these are staged tests and while they're not necessarily inaccurate, they're also not necessarily uh, telling you the whole story. So take all of this with a pinch of salt, but. Uh, needless to say, I'm impressed. I'm very, very excited to see these chips come out. But unfortunately, we're likely going to have to wait until the usual March to May uh, to, to see any sort of chips, even in people like my hands, before even it gets anywhere near to yours. Uh, and it may even be later than that, depending on how the production run is going and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, I'm afraid we'll just have to wait and see on that one. So the conclusion here is I'm very impressed with the Ryzen 3 chip and the new Zen 2 core and how it at least appears to perform anyway. I'm very excited to see them come out and I think I'll be waiting with bated breath to uh, get my hands on it and do some testing. On the Radeon 7 front, of course, we all have to be a slight bit disappointed that AMD isn't, you know, really going at NVIDIA's throat with especially the highest end card they do of obviously the 2080 Ti. Uh, and while it's very impressive to see 2080 levels of performance, especially from, as I said, the budget that AMD has to do this with, um, it's again, just a little bit of that sort of mindshare thing where NVIDIA is still technically the fastest and looks to remain that way for at least another year or so. Um, I'm impressed with it all, all as usual, but just want to see a little bit better on the GPU front, um, but again, crazy good on the CPU front. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you excited for the new Ryzen 3 chips and the Radeon 7 cards? If so, why? What are you interested in? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with live streams on Thursday nights. Yes, that's right. If you're watching this on the, the day that it goes live, there is a live stream tonight at 8 p.m. UK time where you can join the community and chat with us about this and a whole load of other stuff too. 
You can also check out the links in the description down below if you want to support the channel. There's Patreon if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so. Or check out the Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links where you can use them to, you know, pre-order your Radeon 7s or uh, just check out any of the other tech or anything else. It doesn't cost you anything but massively helps me out. You can also check out the other videos over here if you fancy and of course there's plenty of other links down there too from merch to Patreon to actually private internet access which is a great and cheap VPN or Humble Bundle which is a great way to get games cheap and support charities at the same time. Otherwise that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.